Yes, he will. I got something else to tell you. <laughs> yes, I do. I have a Savior. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put a disclaimer on the table. Yeah. 
Well, somebody needs to hear that. Amen. That the Lord will. Yes, will. Nothing's going to stop him. The Lord will. Yes. No one's going to stop him. The Lord will yes. make a way yes. somehow. Yes. Amen. Amen. We taught last week that when you cannot trace his hand, simply trust his heart. Amen. If he delivered you and saved you, he will keep you yes. until the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand to receive the word of God? Amen. I know that I was getting late. Amen. I'll fly this plane in time. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, power and presence of your spirit, the theophany that is in this room, all three of you are here in this visitation. Father, we feel your presence. Jesus, we know your power. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you help us in this moment. Father, we come for no other form of fashion but to lift up your word. That's right. yes. Thank you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Thank you for Judah praising their proclamation and their preparation. We know it's pleasing in your sight. Yes. Now into your word. We need you to hide us behind your cross. Keep us under the dripping of your blood. Across our hearts and our minds, write these words that are found in the gospel according to John 12th chapter, 21st verse. Sir, we would see Jesus. He declared if he be lifted up, he'll draw all men unto himself. His desire and his divineness will rescue a sinner, will reclaim a backslider, give residence or relationship to someone looking for you, Father, in this hour or a church home. Where not only our doors stand ajar, but our hearts stand ajar, open to receive whoever they may be. Yes, Lord. It's in your sweet and precious name we pray. Yes, Amen. 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 The reading of the word is from 1 Peter, uh, the first chapter, verses 6 from 9, uh, from the King James Version. Peter writes, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, you love, in whom, though now you see him not yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. You may be seated in the presence of the most high God. The ultimate enlightenment, part five. The ultimate enlightenment, part five. As we continue... Uh, family in our ascent, uh, in our discipleship journey. Uh, we began last September, almost a year ago, uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit who has brought us illumination, has brought us revelation and application for our lives. To have in this life, uh, 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 this has been life changing, it's been spiritual awakening, and soul relationship and fellowship with the word of the living God. Uh, it also has drawn us closer to who Jesus is and why we should and must love him more today than yesterday. Uh, it was introduced in our sermon, in our message last week. Uh, we declared that, that there is a lack of teaching. Uh, there is a void in preaching. That every now and then, watch this, uh, there will be trouble. Yeah. That's right. uh, uh, there will be a trial, there will be a test, and we will have to go through temptation. Uh, and, and it is the taking of the temperature that God has in mind uh, of our faith, uh, uh, watch this church, to determine where and what area in our lives we need to develop. Come on. Uh, what area is showing through banks, we need to improve uh, uh, and, and, and must grow up and graduate
graduate from nursery to the higher discipline in God's divine process. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen Renee Berry, one of the other misunderstandings in the Christian walk, in the Christian journey, and in the Christian life, Mother Ethel, uh, to be clear and, uh, and, and, and to remove any doubt in the atmosphere, uh, is trouble, trial, test, and temptation, Jordana, are not from a result of our wrongdoing nor rebellious lifestyle. Amen. I need to clear that up. Amen. Uh, this is not that moment. This is a moment where, where God, because he elected you and chosen you and selected you, has designed the hour to see where you are and where I am in my faith and your faith. Amen. Uh, 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 nor, Henrietta, uh, these aren't the ones that, that God is punishing his children with retribution because we broke his law with our bad behavior. This kind of trouble and this kind of trial and this kind of test and this, Janice, kind of temptation is to see and determine, if you're keeping score, uh, 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 the, the level of persuasion, the level of belief, trust, conviction, reliability, and dependability we possess when trial, trouble, and test and temptation come our way. This is not in the notes, but it's a PSA. You never know who or what's inside of someone until you squeeze them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Every now and then, God will squeeze us. <laughs> That's past tense for squeeze. <laughs> We've been squeezed before <laughs> to determine what and who is in us. What level of faith you and I may possess in God and the winds blow viciously and the vicissitudes of the storms of life will almost definitely in some form or fashion find us skip and test our belief. Yes. This is the ultimate enlightenment. Uh, uh, we proclaim from the beginning of this series that Peter is writing to declare that in the Christian life, that in the Christian walk, that in the Christian journey, Mother Glenda, every born-again believer, every born-from-above soul that has been saved and no longer live below, who have placed their faith, their belief, their trust, their confidence, their conviction, their reliability, and their dependability with full persuasion in the Lord Jesus Christ, and being of Christ-like mindedness, this lesson and this scripture that Peter has written for us is how do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with difficult people? And how do you deal with suffering when any one of those or all of those find you where you are? It's a good place to learn. How to do that. And so last week we continued our walk in the Word of God in 1 Peter uh, 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 6 and 7. Uh, and here we got to remind me, because he's always keeping score. <laughs> you forgot the last part of verse 7. And I said to her, we were so caught up in praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Christ. We didn't get that far. And, and the Spirit was telling me, Janice, stick a comma right here, because if, if God gives me the strength and the energy, we'll come back, and here we are today, to talk about the last half of 7, which is 7D, where, where, where Peter writes, uh, 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 at the appearing, the prepositional phrase, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Uh, and so since she reminded me, and I knew where we were going, uh, we need to glean from the remainder of this verse, this prepositional phrase, at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Here is why uh, they and we rejoice or have joy in the midst of manifold or many temptations. This is the reason, church, Facebook, uh, and saints, that in Peter's day and the saints in the present day, in the midst of the trial, trouble, test, or temptation, our faith might be found unto the praise, honor, and glory. Uh, if you have your Bible with you, uh, and I know some theologians call it a sword. If you had your sword with you, I need you to turn to Revelation 5, 9, 12. I just want to read for you, uh, and then we'll come back at the end uh, and, and, and sew this, this suit on us and go out here clean, then the board of hell. Watch this. Watch this. 5, 19, 5, 9, and, and, and through 
uh, uh, 12. Revelation. Watch this. I said, somebody had to blow the dust between those pages. We ain't been here ever, past. <laughs> 5, verse 9 through 12. Watch this. The first part, Jordina, is where God spun my chair around and I just started shouting. Here is at the appearing, appearing of Christ. The word says in the King James, they sung a new song. Yeah. So, so it tells me, Arnett, that, that trouble don't last always. <laughs> see, 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 I might not sing a new song in the midst of the trial, test, temptation, and trouble, but when I get to this point, I have a new song to sing. Yeah. Can I go any further? Yeah. See, I have a new song to sing. If it's not a song I can sing when I'm going through, when I get here yeah. and persevere through all of that, I have a new song. Yeah. This ain't the text, Casey, but I got to go here. The song is Thou Art Worthy yeah. Yeah. to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain has redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, every tongue, every people, every nation, and has made us unto God. Here's where I really start doing the boogaloo. <laughs> you made us unto God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard 11, the voice of many angels. Listen, you and I are going to have a song that angels ain't going to be able to They ain't going to be able to sing with us. Why, Pastor? Because they're not going through the trial, test, and trouble, and tribulation up there. We are, so they can't sing our song. I'm going, oh Lord, Henry, I have mercy. He says, I be heard and heard the voices of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them were 10,000 times, 10,000 and 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, worthy is this lamb that was slain to receive power, riches, wisdom, strength, Honor, glory, and blessing. That's at the appearing of Christ. So now 7D, beloved, I can ride home with her now, has been covered. She says, stop. <laughs> this is the ultimate enlightenment. So watch this, watch this, as I get to 8 and I'm hastening, uh, uh, Doxy. Watch this, Elder Stewart. Whom have not seen? I'll let the baby sing with me. Whom having not seen. Ah, this messed me up. You know it's difficult to serve, for some, it's difficult to serve someone you don't see. What's the old ass and the old cliche? Out of sight, out of mind? It's hard. Sean Drew, we're going to fix this. Whom you haven't not seen, watch the rest of it, you love. I, I said to the spirit in honesty, uh, mom, mom, uh, 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 Carter, there are some folks I'm looking at that I, I, I'm finding hard to love. You tell me I love him whom I had not seen. Oh, this is some work here. Uh, this is some work here. Watch the text. After verse uh, 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 8, I'll get to that in a minute, but watch this. Watch this, whom you have not seen. Whom you have not seen. I'm standing there because I'm stuck there. Because it's, it's hard to, to love someone who you don't see. Because there's only so many other things, Henrietta, that we have a gravitation towards that we love, but they don't love us back. Again, there is a lack of teaching and avoiding preaching, Dr. Coleman, the truth, Shelley, and in the word of Christianity, Christianity, our faith is not in something we see. It's not in someone we see. Have you ever wondered, most churches don't have a picture of Jesus hanging up in the sanctuary. Yeah. 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 All you have is a cross. Yeah. An empty cross. Yeah. I get tickled when I go to some churches and we got ethnicities of Christ. It's us as two. Yeah. <laughs> right? He says, whom you haven't not seen. Yeah. There's a lack of teaching and a void in preaching, Henrietta. It's not about a process from a human being. Yeah. It's not about a perspective. It's not about a system of worldly value. It's not about philosophy from mankind that is vain and empty. It's not about self or self-help. I wish I had a church. It's not about looking, up, looking at the world and improving ourselves 
as human beings. John wrote in 1 John 2, 15, love not the world nor anything that is in the world. I wish I had somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to get heavier and hot on that. Watch this, Junior. And, and so he declares, it's about a, Peter says, this is about a person. Yeah. Yeah. It's about a trusting and a loving. See, loving is a verb. A lot of folks say love. Thank you, Mom Karen. But Mom Karen, everybody has has a love moment yeah. until you hate. Yeah. <laughs> when the one you love doesn't do what you want them to do. Yeah. Come on. I hear that old song from what's that? It's a thin line between love and hate. Yes, it is. <laughs> I hear you I'm having a trailer while I'm having a flashback. Yeah. Yeah, it's a thin line. Yeah. But this is about a loving character. You said right. This is about an action, continuous action. See, to love is a verb. This is not about lip service. This is about your action that qualifies the love that you have for Christ. This is about allegiance. This is about fidelity. I asked a question to a couple who wanted to get married. Can you love more than one person at the same time? And I had to qualify because they both said yes. Well, let me qualify it for you the same. And you understand. I'm talking about a love that is, is, is one-minded on one person at one time all the time. Mm. That's heavy. Yeah, it's heavy. See, see, I love this chocolate drop. That's my wife, because she's a chocolate drop. <laughs> but let me share something with you. I love Christ more. Yeah. And she'll tell you the same about me. And the reason why we love him more, because when we love him more, he teaches us how to love each other. Yeah. 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 yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. We had a new home moment. Pack up stuff and you on your way. Yes. Hit the road, Jack, and don't you come back no more, no more, no more. <laughs> we was at that point, Arnett. Yeah, right. Can I tell the truth and shame the devil? Right. She had enough of me and I had enough of her. Yeah. And I asked yeah. God, God, before this is dissolved and done with, I want to ask you, how do I love her? He answered, somebody needs to write this down. You love her unconditionally. It's the same way I love you. And since then, the new home never got back. In fact, we stayed together, stuck together, struggled together. But we still loved each other enough to know that when we love God with all we have, He will teach us how to love Come on. each other. Come on. John 14, 8, 11, says to me in my notes, I need to turn there while I catch my breath, because I knew I would get excited at this moment. John 14, 8 through 11, let me read something for you. To love someone whom you've never seen. Philip, this is after Jesus' discourse on let not your heart be troubled in my father's house and all that good stuff. Uh, uh, not Philip. Thomas, yeah, it's Philip. Thomas says something to him, Lord, how do we know whether thou goest and how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto me but my father. If you know me, then I know my father. And he goes on. But Philip poses the question this morning. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the father and it will suffice us. It will satisfy us. Jesus responded, have I been with you so long time, and yet has thou not known me, Philip? It's a personal thing. He didn't address the other 11, just Philip, who answers the question. Uh, it gets heavier, Henrietta. Watch this. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how sayest thou, show us the Father? Believest thou that I am in the Father, the Father in me, the words that I speak, I speak not of my own, for self, but the Father dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very word. Listen, if you don't trust his word, Philip, look at the works. I'm going somewhere. You got to look at the works. That's right. 
Jesus declared, Blessed is him who has not seen and believed. Sean, we're going to fix this. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus asked Philip, you see the healings, you see the miracles, you see all the other acts that show forth the splendor, uh, not, not of the Son, but of the Father. Mm -hmm. See, they had walked with Jesus for three years. Can I say something here that is, is mind-blowing, Reverend Carlton, uh, Reverend Edwards? It's mind-blowing. They walked with Jesus and saw Jesus, but yet they didn't see him. He was with them. He was with them, and they still didn't see him. Sean, it's a setup. It's a setup. They saw Jesus. They touched Jesus. They fellowship with Jesus. They lived with Jesus. They ate with Jesus. They had physical eyesight. They saw him. But Peter, in the text, Dr. Wilson, is writing to those in this pericope and to us this morning and to Facebook and YouTube for those of us who haven't seen Jesus, we still love him. Blessed are those who have not seen him, yet believe. So, so, so here is the burning question that someone has already asked in the midst. Pastor, preacher, bishop, deacon, Dr. Doc Fields, how is it that we love him even though we don't see him? I'm going to fix this real quick. Marcella, this is heavy. Uh, 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 see, I'm going to mess with some scripture, but not the scripture. It's those who quote the scripture wrong. <laughs> Listen to this. Hebrews 11, 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Watch the next line. Evidence not seen. So it's not about the evidence. It's about the hope and the expectation. Even though I don't see him, I still love him. Oh, that's too heavy. Oh my! Uh, so how is it that I still love him? Even though I have the expectation, Belinda, and the anticipation that I know he's there and in my life, and I don't need no evidence, because Hebrews told me just a few minutes ago, it's not in the evidence. Jesus answers the question when he says, I'm leaving you, but I will leave you with my Holy Spirit. So in other words, in order to see God, and not love and, and, and love him is you have to look at God through the lens of the Holy Spirit Come on, and not with your flesh we are. Come on, bro. Yeah. Right. Teaching it right. Yeah. You will miss him. See, it's not about eyesight, it's about insight. Yeah. Yeah. I got trifocals on. I see three times, and I thought the couple in the back was somebody I knew and loved, and I still love them still and address them. Come on. That's right. But that was my physical eyesight. That's right. That's right. The Holy Spirit, that's Henrietta, <laughs> gave me the insight to say, that's not them. I still love him, brother. You got some long hair. You see your pastor's bald head. You better not go to sleep back there. You're going to clip. When is coming, Doc? I'm proactive. I need some hair, brother. But, but the point is that most of the time, we look at things through the physical sight. Yeah. Yes. This is that's eyesight. Yeah. This is about insight. Yeah. So you and I, we reason why we love him, even though we don't see him, because we have the Holy Spirit, and when we yield to him, we will have insight, Hallelujah. and you'll be able to see Jesus. Yeah. 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 Sure, this is some heavy stuff here. God is swinging from the well, he had no rafters, dude. From the ceiling fans. <laughs> it has never been. Can I use a double negative in the English? Demar, you can correct me when I talk to you later. Never not. <laughs> Janice, I know that's not grammatically correct. She's like, oh my God. Never not. It's a double negative. But this has never not been. I just feel like saying it, Greg. Mom Scott. Bro, I just feel like saying it. That's your mama. Hey, Amen, brother. That apple rolled nowhere from the tree. See, that's insight. Even though I'm looking at you. <laughs> Never not been about physical eyesight. That's why all those false preachers and all those false prophets and all those false teachers are dangling a carrot that people who are yielding to with their physical sight, that's why God has never
never move in your life. Come on. It won't. Come on. This is about insight. And if you have insight, you know who God is, what he will do, and how he will keep you. God doesn't need a gimmick, smoke and mirrors. He don't have no rabbit in the hat. He's not behind a curtain telling you to bring me the broomstick. Peter has carefully woven into the text three elements that every disciple will need in their lives, at least three. There's faith, hope, and love. It's in the text. You gotta have enough faith to be full of persuasion, even though you don't see him, yeah. you love him, you believe him, yeah. you trust him. You gotta have enough hope, enough yeah. anticipation and expectation yeah. that if God promised by his word, yeah. he will keep it and he will perform it. You gotta have enough love in him and for him that he can do everything but fail. Yeah. Even while you're going through yeah. the trial, the test, the trouble, and the temptation, yeah. my, God my God shall deliver. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Okay. It's getting late. It's getting late. At the moment we surrender our will, at the moment our submission is to God, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's right. Every born again believer now has insight. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, well, well. Use your insight and not your eyesight, yeah. Yeah. and you will know exactly what God is up to. Come on. Yes. Yes. And if even if He doesn't tell you everything, and I'm prone to tell you, He won't. He wants to see. Because if He tells you everything, you want to take a shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I got a better mousetrap, God. <laughs> I need some money and help. I can call Carlton. <laughs> no, Carla, I'm sorry. I'll clean it up. He <laughs> said, God ain't told you that. That's eyesight, Pastor. That ain't his. What's the text? Oh, I feel like Fire Marshal Fields is on the scene. I heard the siren. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Fire Marshal Fields has showed up. Watch this. Even though now you see him not, but believing you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Because you and I and the born again believer is sealed with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, we're able to have insight. See, see there is some fruit that the Holy Spirit will develop and grow in us as we continue to mature and look more like Jesus. That's right. yes. Yes. See, in this particular part of the text, the, the fruit is joy. And if you turn to Ephesians, I believe it's one of the fruit that's in those verses. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. Thank you, Elderberry. Yes, it is. And, and see, this is where God taught me something, Henrietta. Even though I've been looking at it with a physical eye, God says, now reshape and refocus Change your lens to the spiritual, and you'll see some people whom you love, watch this, who are going through, but they don't talk about it. Yes. 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 They don't utter a word. Sure, I'm looking at your husband because I know what he's been through over the last two years and a half. Most of us would have crumbled like a rich cracker. Some of us crumble and won't come to church and we break a nail. <laughs> Why well, I tell other no, I just want this and I can't go. <laughs> <laughs> they might see this finger or this thumb. Come on, tell I'll come back next that. week. Listen to that. Listen to that. That's well, we can't go because sometimes we ain't got the crispiest haircut. God don't care if you're crispy or not cut. Come on now. Bring your woolly head self here. I'm going to say something. Bring your woolly head. <laughs> That's insight. That ain't got Bring your woolly head on in here anyway. That's right. Come on now. 
Watch this. This is some tough, this is some good stuff. We sacrifice our temple, our time, talent, and treasure for the cause of Christ, whom we haven't seen, we love. Hallelujah. And somebody praise him that, that, uh, we, that, that they didn't and we don't uh, love. And, and because of that, uh, that's the eyesight, but it's the insight. Watch this, watch this, watch this. What he says in the Greek, uh, I'm, I'm hurrying in my notes here, that, that, that they rejoice in the midst of the trouble, trial, test, or temptation. The word joy in the Greek is chara. It means cheerfulness. Here we are, I didn't catch this until I've been looking at it with the physical eyesight. When I look at some individual and I call some names and somebody say, you missed me, Pastor. I don't want to do that. But there's some folks who are going to miss somebody. They're, they're going to write me, he ain't saying my name. I tell him off. There, there's some folks going through some stuff that we, we have direct relationship and fellowship but every time we see them, they have this ginormous smile. Yeah. 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 Come on. And here's what this, and, and, and watch this, Elder Stewart, what the text is saying, that, that, that unspeakable means that, that, that they don't even talk about what it is they're going through. That's right. That's right. You ever notice that? Yeah. Jacob was the same way. He didn't talk to the other prisoners about the prison he was in. Yeah. He just asked the butler to remind him that I'm still here. Yeah. But he didn't talk about why you were you know, missing this. Yeah. Come on. Those who go through, are, they, they have the unspeakable joy. Yeah. That means the conversation is not about their trial, test, trouble, or temptation. It's about the triumph Come on. The silence that they portray waiting on God to deliver them. They know they have the confidence, the assurance that this won't last always. They don't post on Facebook. They don't want on social media. See, that's insight. Physical eyesight will post on those, those, those vehicles and go back in 30 minutes or stay. I seen some folks stay online. Girl, you know I'm going through some stuff and sit there and wait to see how many likes they got on prayer. Yeah. Yeah. Love they got. I'm talking right. You're talking right. You're talking right. Social media ain't got nothing with, to do with spiritual media. Yeah. Your help coming from the hills. Yeah. Your help is in God. See, you have to have insight. And all those folks that I know, watch how this works, have never published anything on any social media platform. Amen. Not one of them. Amen. Not one of them. Not one of them. And, and, and full of the glory is, here's why. Here's why. Because Jesus said, if you blow your own horn, you have your reward. But when you're sitting with God and you have the physical or spiritual insight given by the Holy Spirit, you know that when you come through, you'll have a reputation and can be accounted for that you've been with Jesus the whole time you've been through. Amen. See, joy resides in the unseen Jesus, the source of joy. Faith in Christ brings uh, us love towards him. Even though we haven't seen him, we have future hope that fuels our present joy. Uh, uh, Every trial, every trouble, every test, every temptation, every experience, we can learn something new. See, yes. one of the misunderstandings and false teaching uh, in Christianity is, uh, and the pulpit is responsible, is that they don't tell folk that you may have to go through a flood. Yeah. You may have to go through a fire. Yeah. But if you go through the flood, God promises you won't drown and your clothes won't get wet. Yeah. If you go through a fire, God promises you won't smell like smoke and you won't get burned up. I wish I had some help yeah. in this place here. Yeah. Some of us have been through hell and high water, and yet God has still kept us Come on. Yeah. and brought us forward. Yeah. And now we are accounted. This is the ultimate enlightenment. Uh, here comes the close. Here comes the 
comes the close. Receiving the end of your faith. This is going to mess with you. Receiving the end of your faith. See, there's a process. Watch this. There's a progress, a progression that, that if you stick with God and stick with Jesus, whom you haven't seen, nor God have you seen, and you use insight from the Holy Spirit, you'll stay in that moment and God will deliver you. Uh, 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 Junior, I, I said to him a long time ago, I don't know of anybody who goes to work and tell the boss you can keep the check. Right. Oh, maybe some people here. Maybe you just don't want to get paid. No, I expect when I roll up on Friday morning, sometimes at midnight, I'll check Chase. <laughs> they got that electronic deposit thing now. You ain't got to wait until I put no paper in your hand. My stuff is ain't there. Okay, who got who got that much money? You can meet me at the service in case there's an electronic failure with my stuff. And I get some, but, but all of us who labor expect to get paid. That's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. Try when you go to work for two weeks and tell them, hey, you know what? You can keep the check. I'm good. The quiet is something ain't gonna happen. So the receiving is is the reward. Or the recompense for your stick to it mm -hmm. Watch how the text works backwards. In loving a Jesus mm -hmm. whom you have never seen, yeah. and not even talking about the trial, test, trouble, or temptation you went through to anybody. And, and, and here's the glory in this moment receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. Watch this, and I gotta go. Obtaining emphasis, this is receiving, that we are already receiving. So you ain't got to wait until you get to Revelation 5, 9 through 12. Some of us are, have already and still are receiving the glory or the manifestation yes. that God has brought us through. Amen. Now, let me go slow because this Amen. is deep. This is deep, Rev. C. Elder, Elder Stewart, this is deep. First of all, the salvation, watch this, has three tenses. It's the past tense. Understand past tense salvation is justification. So in other words, Paul, when he wrote in Romans 8.1, uh, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. You don't have to worry about being judged based on the sin you've done. Amen. Pastor, do I have liberty to keep on sinning? No. 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 That's past sin. Present sin, if that happens, but in the future, and I'm almost there, Janice, there is no sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Past and present, then you, you're justified. There's no judge, no jury of your peers who are going to come. I need to set somebody free. Somebody's struggling with their past. And Jesus died to set you free from your past sin. There's nobody who's going to judge you Based on your past sin. I got a roll with this and I went back to uh, midweek meditation, Janice, and the question you asked, then what is it that we're being judged on? It's simply based on your works. Not on the sin, on the works that you do or don't do that are in Jesus' name or that are not in his name. I feel like teaching this. It's a teaching moment. That's, that's the judgment. All the works that you didn't do in his name does that mean they're going to kick me out of heaven? No. It simply means that they will be burned like hay and stubble. If I'm calling the text right. And removed and swept away. It's the good works that will remain. Come on. Come on. This is Bible. I'm sorry. It's Bible. It's biblical. It's your good works. Uh, uh, it's your good works that will remain. That's the judgment. That's called the, the Bema seat. Where we'll stand before Christ and he will judge us according and answer to him for the works that we've done, good and bad. Amen. That's justification. That's the first tense of your salvation. The second past tense. The second tense is present. That's the sanctification. Come on. If you've never heard this, please start writing or see me. They get it in new members or see me in new members. There's justification. Now there's sanctification. That means God has set you apart right. from the world. Yeah. 
And Carlton and Reverend, I keep calling Carlton, Reverend Everson gave you a proper title. And church, listen to this. We cannot serve God from 10 to 12 on Sunday and go back to the world on 12 Sunday afternoon, wait till Sunday morning, go around, step back into holiness, step back out of, after 12, because that's when we get out, because I'm sick of fella. <laughs> I was turned into a pumpkin. And step back, you see, you can't leave holiness and step into hell. Come on, brother. Yeah. And operate in the world. Come on, two to right. And there's a reason why God sanctifies us, or this is not that old phony stuff. Hey, hey, hey I feel sick. And folks slobbing at the mic and hollering all over the place and falling all over the floor and getting their prayer. No, that's not sanctification. That's foolishness. Come on. Because when you stop dancing, Come on. you still got to walk. Come on. Watch this. Watch this. Remember I told you nobody works and doesn't get this. Expect to get paid. Mm -hmm. The wages of sin, the work of sin, is yeah. death. Yeah. That's the wage. Mm -hmm. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Yes. Mm -hmm. The present tense is the salvation and sanctification, which we're in a process of being daily delivered from the power of sin. Wow. You and I have the power Come on, via the Holy Spirit to be victorious over sin in our lives. Yeah. I wish I had somebody could help me. Yeah. All you have to do, it's not all you have to do, if you yield to the spirit, I guarantee you it cannot and will not, can I use my double negative? Never not go wrong. If you yield to the Holy Spirit, I guarantee you all is well and God is pleased with who you are. Yeah. You and I just have to make the choice. Yeah. It's just a choice. It's just a choice. I want to hug it out so bad when he said to me in the back room, I said to him, can I use you for a minute? You're already there. I said, I thought you weren't going to be here today. Earl said, no, I thought better of God's grace that he has given me. I need to be here instead of where I was going. Y'all missed it. He made a choice. They'll be there when you get done. And if they're going home, so what? You'll see them again. Yeah. It's a choice. I've never seen anything that I have tried and have successfully done in the name of Jesus. Never has it gone wrong. Ever. I've seen stuff with my eyesight, physical or not. I done messed up a whole lot of stuff. It never went right. In fact, it got worse. Yes. Yes. It only gets worse when you use your flesh. That's right. Listen to that. It only gets worse. It gets harder. I wish I had some help. When you have the Holy Spirit and the insight, God promises you that you will triumph and be victorious. And one of the things my, my church home and family know about me, and some who know me personally, Eyes don't like eyes that don't like losing as a nothing. nothing. <laughs> I don't. I don't care if it's marbles. No. I want to win, Jesse. <laughs> I do. But that's a higher spiritual vertical level. I know that I can win with him in everything yeah. I do for him if I allow him to work through me. There you yeah. go. Yeah. 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 Let me give you a PSA and I got to go. Yesterday, what was ordained for men's ministry, I got to share this uh, out with Tanks in church. Uh, 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 and uh, me and Henry are talking to our son about something that's going on. Somebody, you know, for the nosy folks, it's none of your business. Very <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Pastor, keep on talking. I'm going to make you hear. I need the juice so I can run back to you on Facebook. You're going to get some juice all right. <laughs> Watch this, Marcella, how this worked out. And so I got up yesterday morning, uh, the normal time, Shelly, because I fell asleep at 6.30 on Friday night. I was up at 6 a.m. on Saturday morning. Don't call your pastor at 6.35. And the Spirit said to me, text your son. Because I tossed and I turned all night thinking about what he's dealing with. Somebody's got a child right now that's going to help you. Yeah. See, it's, it's, it's not physical eyesight, and I'll share with you in a moment. It was, this, it was the Holy Ghost insight. Yeah. Texting. So him and I, thank you, baby. Him and I have a, have a code where when we text each other, this is how he, he works. He says, call me when you get this. Yeah. Yeah. 
And automatically, I just go to Chase first. Let me see where I got it. I got it for my call. Do you want to want some? I ain't going to call him until I check and see. <laughs> so I flipped the script on him yesterday morning, Mom Carter. I text him back. Call me when you get this. <laughs> and he did. And here's what he did. Right when I pulled up to your house, Elder Marshall, the ministry with men yesterday was about home is the first ministry you should have. Right. Here my son is on my phone and I'm 10 steps from your door where the men are already meeting and fellowshipping and I had a C-H-O-I-C-E -E choice. Do I go in with their pizza and the brothers or do I sit here and take this call with my son and the insight was, no, you stay on the phone. Yeah, that's right. And when I said to him, the physical eyesight that I was looking at his situation with, he said, no, daddy, it's nothing like that. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. You're missing that. I had already drawn a conclusion because I, I left the physical insight until he opened his mouth and gave me the holy... Listen, your yeah. children can speak some peace yeah. into your soul yeah. if you let them. Yeah. We gotta stop being yeah. so proactive. Yes, yes. yes. that's right. Yes. Yes. I thought it was my turn to get into the devil just jump. I'm waiting to get in the room on that. He's steady turning. Where are you gonna let me in, boy? I'm, listen, they must not got some form. Listen, I'll, stay, I'll be right there. Yeah. He said, put the rope down, Daddy. This ain't your turn. He started talking, and I started listening, Mother Glenda, and, and, and I graduated. That's Mississippi for graduate. I graduated. Anybody from Mississippi? Okay, we good. Down south. On here. <laughs> graduated. All right, Mississippi. It, it, it's inside. It ain't, it's, what's this? I got to go on. Watch this. He shared with me, no, this is how it, it, how it really is. It's not what you're looking at with your eyesight. Yeah. Well, well, well. Earl came and got me and said, you all right? I said, I am now. I'm just talking to my son. Yeah. But before I went into that room with the men, oh, come yeah. on, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You got to spend time with your children because that's your first ministry. That's right. The pizza was cold, but my breath was hot enough to heat it up. I still ate it. Yeah. Yeah. And what a fellowship we had. But God had me sitting there because my soul was troubled. My soul was tested. My soul was in trial. My soul was in temptation. Because if anybody messed with that crumb snatcher 6'5", 260 pound boy I got, all oh, 125 is coming at you. He said, no, daddy, put your old good self there. You ain't going to win the fight. You too thin to win and too like the fight. Let me handle my business. I stepped out of that car like a proud bopper. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying to you. Listen to your children. I don't care if they Google or God, God. Like that baby over there got my attention right now. And so do Belinda Bear. I'm going to go hug them. They talking in tongues. Y'all just don't know what they say. They singing to each other. Oh, she's right on here. You and I have the power of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us and can make a choice not to sin, knowing the blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Here's the last part, and I got to go. That's past, present, here's the future tense of salvation. See, there is justification, and then there's sanctification. The last one is, and you got to hear this, is glorification. It's glorification. There are three tenses to salvation. You're justified. You're sanctified. That's why now, what you and I do, not that your faith is based on works. Come on. That's right. Amen. It's not on works that any shall boast. But James comes right back and says, faith without works is dead. Yeah. 
See, when you love Jesus and you have faith, you should be laboring to lift him up yeah. so somebody else yeah. might see yeah. and taste that he is good. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. But there's glorification. Let me finish my thought. Uh, unto salvation of your soul. Here it is. That when we see him, Mm -hmm. John says like we'll look just like, like him. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no way, Janice, that I'm going to enter into the kingdom looking like fields and acting like fields unless I get my act down here first Come on. together Come on. and then when he calls me or catches me up, whichever's going to happen, I'll look just like him and then I'll be able to sing my new song. Yeah. Come on. Come on. The song that the angels can't sing will testify of how we came over. We'll tell them of how we were victorious. We'll share how we triumph. We'll look back at the past and the present. And when we see him, we will look just like him. But in the meantime, and in between time, yes. we got to go through it. Uh, here we go. Can I call the world for a minute? Oh, when I look back at Abraham, he would have never known that Jehovah was Jireh unless he took Isaac, whom he waited for all his life. And God told him, take him up Mount Moriah and sacrifice him. Yes. When Isaac got there, he saw the altar and the wood and the fire. But where is the sacrifice? Uh, Isaac, you be the sacrifice. See, there's no way I'm going to take my crumb snatcher and, and, and do what God told me to do. The, but see, that's physical eyesight. And the moment I, Abraham stopped and thought about it, and he heard a ram in the bush. And then, <laughs> that's a bad ram, man. Is that a ram? Yeah, that's a ram. Listen, of course, he, he would have never known that Jehovah was a giant. It's not until you sacrifice something that's near and dear to you that know that God will still help you if you do what he asks and not look at it as the physical, but it's the eyesight. Come on. Jacob would have never made it through the prison moment to get to the palace moment if he never said a word about Potiphar's wife lying on him. Yeah. Can I go further? Yeah. I see Moses standing at the Red Sea yeah. with a stick in his hand. Yeah. Pharaoh right behind him <laughs> and his army. Yeah. Moses didn't think about no army. Yeah. He just knew his God was able. Yeah. And the moment he knew that, God opened up a Red Sea. I need somebody to know that even though the enemy may be behind you, God is still in front of you, and we will make a way out of nowhere. Moses told him to take a look at them for the last time, because you'll see them no more. They walked across dry ground. And something I learned about God in that moment, those that are not his cannot use his blessing to go forward. The moment they thought they could use God's blessing for his people, they got in and God drowned every last thing. Oh, yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Every last one of them yes, were drowned. Yes, sir. Yo ain't saying nothing. Yes, sir. Huh. Yes, sir. I got more. Yes, sir. <laughs> I see the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace. Uh huh. They turned the flames up as hot as they would go and the fire as high as it will go. Yes. Nebuchadnezzar said, put him in there. Mm -hmm. But him couldn't sleep all night, mm -hmm. tossing and turning, worried about, isn't that strange, an enemy of God worrying about God's children? Yeah. That's a message for somebody yeah. I want to holler at you. Yes, when he woke up, Junior, and checked the furnace, somebody said, didn't we put three in there? Yeah. There's a fourth one. Come on now. You never know the fourth one 
until he gets you in the fire and he has the power to deliver you. There's a fourth one walking around with them. And they yelled out, oh, King Nabi, we still here. Somebody needs to hear that. I'm talking about Daniel in the lion's den. There you go. There you go. Never looked at the lion, but kept his eye on his God. Daniel walked out of the lion's den. Let me close here. Now I'm looking at Christ. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. And his moment in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yeah. I'm going to holler at somebody. Yeah. Well, Pastor, how did he deal with it? He said, if it be your will, yeah. let this come. Yeah. Sometimes, Junior, I've seen that same moment. That is the burden and the heaviness of the load is too much, Henrietta. I lie awake at night and I say, God, if it be your will, yeah. let this come. Pass on me. Every now and then, you and I need to have a Gethsemane moment. Yes. Yes. I'm going somewhere, Mount Carter. Yes. Yes. And God never answered him. Come on. Because it wasn't his will. Yes. Jesus came right back and said, Nevertheless, yes. not yes. my will. Yes. That's spiritual insight, but your will. Yes. I see him getting arrested. Yes. I see Judas kissing him. I said to my brother, he's got somebody he's dealing with. I hope they ain't on. <laughs> <laughs> Even Jesus was kissed by Judas. Yeah. You're going to have someone who say they love you and look at you and kiss you yeah. and betray you. Yes. But Jesus still loved him. Oh, God. Yeah. That's the part I'm, I'm still in school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Watch this. You can see him up the Via Della Rosa, the way of suffering, beaten, bloody, bruised, battered for our iniquity. So much so the cross became so heavy, they got someone to take the cross. He couldn't carry it by himself. And now I see him stretched wide and hung high. You see him with nails in his hands and, and the nails in his foot. As he hangs and he dies on the cross. I see it as it gets dark and dreary and dim and doubtful for those who had any hope in the living Christ. He's dead now. They took and begged the body that they could put him in a borrowed tomb. And they, they was thought they were smart enough, Elder Stewart, that they rolled a stone because he declared, if you tear this building down in three days, I will raise it up yeah. again. Yeah. Yeah. Junior, here's your sermon in our song. Friday is here, but Sunday's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody needs in a fighting right now. Yeah. Friday is here, yeah. but Sunday is coming. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a Friday, and it's a bad Friday, but Sunday is yeah. coming. Yeah. And on the third day, yeah. when Sunday came, yeah. on the third day, when Sunday came, yeah. on the third day, yeah. when Sunday came, yeah. God shook the tomb. Yeah. There was an earthquake. Yeah. And him that was dead yeah. got up and took off the grave clothes, Come on. stretched forth and walked out of the tomb, yeah. declaring all power, yeah. all power, yeah. all power, yeah. all power, yeah. all power yeah. is in my hand. Yeah. Oh, power. Here's the close. Why seek ye the dead amongst the living? He's not here. He's risen just like he told you he would. And somebody may be buried right now. Let me draw the parallel. Horizontally, you're in a burden. You're in a trial. Thank you, Casey. You're in a test, you're in a temptation, and it seems like it's dark, it's dreary, it's dim, and you're doubtful. Here's my answer to you. If God has the power to raise a dead come Jesus, on, come on, come he's on. got the same power come on. to bring you through. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If he chose you, he selected you, and you are his, and he is yours, Trouble won't last always. You gotta go through it, watch this, for your good 
and for his glory. Yes. That's right. That's right. Somebody needs to see you. Yes. And God's going to send them to you. Yes. And you've got the testimony because you went through the test and the trial yes. to tell them that God is able. Yes. He is. He is. He is. I'm out of time, but not talking. It is 12 and headed towards 1. There may be somebody here this morning. Somebody may be on Facebook or YouTube. Tamla Man is singing not only your song, but it was once, uh, it's still our song. That's, that, that the Holy Spirit ushered us to the presence of Jesus. There he is able to fix what is broken. He's able to cleanse us from all sin, all unrighteousness. He's able to make us whole again. He's able to restore the relationship in the vertical with the Father and the fellowship. Well, Pastor, should I give my life to him? Does that mean I'm immune to problems and pain and people and pressure? No. As long as you're in the world, you have those, but you'll have the strength. You have the help. You have the healing. You have the hope and the expectation. He'll bring you through. And when it's all said and done, when you he receives you in the kingdom that he is reigning over, you and I will look just like him. Yeah. That's worth holding on and holding out. I'm not asking the government to fix my sin problem. I'm not asking for a bailout or a handout. When I have a bomb in Gilead who's a healer of my sin sick soul, there's nothing I can do to fix it. There's, no, no, there's nothing I can take to make it better. There's nothing I can use or abuse to make it go away. Thank you, baby. If you need Jesus this morning, if you, this is between you and him. If you never said yes to him, this is your moment. Don't say, Pastor, I'm only 22. I'm only 20. I don't care if you're 62. All of us have an expiration date. There's a time God's going to shut our eyes. And Mom Carla, I see my bumper sticker. Somebody said to me, Pastor, what if you're wrong? No, what if I'm right? If I'm right, then I'd rather err on the, not caution, I'm going to err on the side of Christ. See, because the, the spiritual insight is telling me I need a Savior. And if He is the way, the truth, and the life, there's no other way I can get to the Father except through Him. Somebody here is in a vaccinated condition. You know Him. You loved him at one time, but then you left because something happened. And you no longer trusted God. That's all right. That's okay. But now you're at a point. Pastor, can I come back to God? Can I come back to fellowship and wrestle? Absolutely. God didn't move. We did. He's just waiting for us with his arms stretched wide. Come on home. He don't have his hand on his hip telling you where you've been and what you've done. You shouldn't have gone there. I told you anyhow. None of that. He just wants to embrace you. Somebody may be looking for a church home. This is the place. It's between you and God. This is the place. If you want to meet me at the church, I will talk with you. I promise you. Three things and I'm done. One, we will embrace you where you are. Two, we will encourage you together as we go on the journey of this Christian walk. And three, we will equip you with the Word of God. That's all we preach here is the Word of God. If you're looking for the true God, we'll find Him here in His Word and amongst His people. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Amen. All of us have said yes to the Savior 
And all of us are trying to sacrifice and submit ourselves under the auspices of a mighty God. We declare we're not perfect, but we are forgiven. Join us on the journey. Shall we stand? Father, we thank you. We praise you for what our eyes have seen, our ears have heard. Thank you for the enlightenment. Through the word of Peter, God. Jesus, who you declared, if you love me, feed my sheep. Peter, you're still feeding us. Now we know more about you, God. We also know more about ourselves. And the reason why you sent tests, trial, temptation, or trouble. Thank you for the hour of visitation. We leave here from your presence, from this place, but never from your presence. It's now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To him, the only wise God, our Savior, majesty, dominion, power, now and forevermore, and all the saints of God. Together we say amen. 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 Have a great week in the Lord. Amen.